Hi, this is Rob Onspach, and welcome to another edition of E-Heroes, the interview series for entrepreneurs. Today's E-Hero is Paul Carpenter, who is a hypnotist and faith-based traveler. What does that mean? Wow. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the on the show. Uh, I'm I'm really uh, I want to say congratulations to you with everything that's going on uh, with you, Rob, and all of the books that you've put out, and all of the success that those books have had as well. Not just putting them out, because a lot of people put put books out and they don't get success. Uh, and and you have a proven track record. And I just want to say thank you for that. And also, this is an amazing idea. This show is great. Uh, and I'm so happy that you're getting all these people that are, are contacting you and wanting to be on the show. So first of all, that, and second of all, faith-based faith traveler. Uh, yes. So a lot of times in my posts, I write faith-based life. Uh, and so to be a faith-based traveler or have this faith-based life idea is to be one that is as well connected to the direction of what would be considered the light or to be good <laughs> in all moments at every second of your day. And being that I don't have a normal job, uh, <laughs> I, um, I'm able to therefore reference myself to anyone who is at need in the moment. For instance, the woman who's crossing the street or uh, the person whose papers flew everywhere while everybody else is the one who walks by. I'm the guy who's helping pick up the papers. I'm the one who's taking the woman across the street. I live on some weird level, and I, I haven't been able to explain it completely yet, but I live on some weird level of, like, call it karmic goodness, if you will. Uh, so doing good, and then um, here's, here's the idea on some weird level. Um, one, it comes with that you're like a child. And no matter how much bad stuff happens to you, you always walk into a situation. I'm talking, let's say, a room full of, uh, I don't know, gangsters or something that are from the worst life ever. And they, you know, we're talking in the middle of Africa or somewhere in Egypt, which I've done before, by the way. And I start doing magic tricks for these people, which would be obscene in anyone's mind. Uh, but for me, it's, uh, it's, it's the thing to do because I'm a child in my heart. You know, and so I immediately shared that. That's one of the first qualities I think that it takes to live that kind of life. Um, the second thing, like I was trying to explain, uh, which is kind of an unexplainable thing, is so a cow doesn't think where the grass is going to come. Like he doesn't think, I need grass in the morning. Where am I going to get the grass? No, there's grass there and he just eats. And neither does the bird think, hey, where are the worms? No, he just flies around and goes, oh, there's the worms we eat. And so I, too, on some level, being that I live in this manner, feel as though I'm just going to have something to eat. I mean, I'm going to work for it. Don't get me wrong, right? I'm going to create. I'm going to do something. I'm going to give an offer uh, to anybody who wants the things that I have uh, as far as I believe some kind of concepts and ideas of life. So, uh, the people who accept it, uh, nine times out of 10 walk away saying, Oh my God, thank you. And I've kept lifelong friends because of it. Um, and because of my wild, I guess, outside of the box thinking, uh, which many people, I believe what it comes down to is when people, um, have a problem in their life or a real weird situation, they come straight to me as if I have some answers, uh, because I live this crazy life, this, this, uh, because nobody understands it. And, 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 and truly, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think I understand it much either, except I pray three times a day. I meditate, uh, at all times. Uh, so there's times I'm in the middle of just watching, uh, some documentary and I'll take a breath. Oh, this just happened to me, by the way. And I'll take a breath and, I'll meditate through the breath, like just saying thank you for this one breath that I'm aware that I'm actually taking in right now. So I live a very weird, uh, outside the box kind of thinking, you know, and I thought to myself, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are always in the corporate world who are saying, Hey, you know, we need to think more outside of the box. We need, 
bring you that outside of the box thinking. So I have designed a, a seminar uh, that's based on everything that I've ever learned almost uh, as far as what I think that I'm really uh, well versed in. And so what I did was I amalgamated everything that I've ever learned and turned it into the most simple terms and simple concepts. And this is like deep stuff like hypnosis and neurolinguistic programming, uh, branding, um, what it takes to do that and, and the mentality that you have to, you know, incur within yourself. And, you know, it takes in a lot of the stuff from Think and Grow Rich and Napoleon Hill. So there's a lot of stuff there, you know, um, and, and a lot of information that well, I've seen, I've seen on the internet, people sell one, one tenth of what I'm selling for, you know, hundreds of dollars and I'm giving it away for free. And it's funny. I can't find anybody to grab it. <laughs> Well, I'm like, this, is, this is pretty good stuff, guys. You know, over the last year, though, you know, and when and 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 I I I had lunch with you in in L.A. Uh, last yeah. February, mm -hmm. and um, since that time, you've been in L.A., you've been in Miami, you've been in Dallas, you've been—I mean, all over the place—and you never worry about where you're going or where you're staying. So, okay, <laughs> I think this comes to a conversation we were having once before, and you, as you said to me, are you secretly a millionaire? And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the answer is faith-based life. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, but, but also, also, um, there is a bit of planning that comes into play. So I think I call it, maybe call it planning on the fly. Um, and, and that comes down to, you know, okay, so when you saw me in L.A., I was also in a really rough spot, right? So I went there with the plans of having a whole bunch of things, once again, planning on the fly, and uh, all of these promises and, and, and uh, things that I showed you at the point, at one point in time, uh, I showed you some, um, uh, I think it was a magazine at the time, it was a comic magazine. Mm -hmm. And so I was, you know, and, and they had really good print and really good stuff and really good articles and very well-known, very, very well-known comics on these magazines. I was very impressed. And so that they asked me to do some marketing for them. I was like, this is amazing. I would love to be involved. So I went there in the thinking that I was going to be living on a yacht <laughs> and uh, that didn't turn out that well. So I ended up almost basically homeless on the streets and at, at night going to the Magic Castle and dressing in the best clothes that I had and performing and trying to find gigs as well as I could, you know, doing everything I could to survive. Um, so there's a, there's a weird, uh, you know, double-edged sword to this faith-based life. Um, and... And so, like anything, I think, it really in life, like if you have a regular life, I have a friend of mine, I spoke to him for, wow, three hours today on the phone that I've known since I was eight years old. And, and he's like, you know, I live vicariously through you. <laughs> and he's like, I follow your crazy. He goes, because, you know, one minute you're in LA, the next minute you're in, uh, you know, New Orleans getting shot. Uh, the next minute you're in Austin, then you're in Vegas and you have your own apartment and a scooter, then you sell it all for no reason and you end up in Miami when you're at Art Basel, uh, you know, at, at making these edifices of, of art, uh, you know, at these million dollar hotels and then all of a sudden you're arrested and then you're hanging out with Shepard Ferry, the guy from Obey. You know, <laughs> it's like, who are you, man? <laughs> you know, so... Um, so I think, I think, and this also comes back to that same conversation with my friend on the phone, I think that somewhere along the way, and, and this was an accidental thing that happened to me when I was 14 years old, uh, a, a friend of mine who shall remain, remain nameless, who I still know to this day, um, came over to my house, and I swear to you, I swear to you, I'm going to show everybody because I don't want anybody to think I'm lying. He brings to me something that looks like this, okay? I look just like this. I mean, I'm not even lying to you. Something like this, he says. It's a little, little, little just a white little piece of paper. And I'm 14 years old, okay? Mind you, I am, 
I have never at this point done any kind of crazy psychedelic or any anything, anything, nothing. I I was a pure saint uh, for most of my life. Oh, I didn't have sex until I was twenty. So um, you know, I, I I he comes to me, he goes, "This is acid," and I go, "What's acid?" And so we take some acid together at 14 years old. We're riding a roller coaster. And when we come to realization after, I think, 45 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever, I don't know what time, what happened, we were watching a screen on a television with fuzz. And that was all. <laughs> so at some point, it becomes late in the night. And he says, oh, my God, I got to go home. My dad's going to get pissed off at me. and just takes off running and goes home and leaves me in the room by myself. Now, something very important happens to me in this moment, right? Now, uh, one, the walls start melting, and I start, you know, oh, my God, when is this going to end? And then I realized something very deep and profound in that moment, and that was life can end at any moment really quickly. And you have to know something right here, right now. This experience is to tell you that this is going to end. You don't have to worry. This is going to dissipate from your body and you're going to be clean in a day or so or whatever. You might feel some weirdness. But, and I was weird that I was dosing. I was telling myself this as if a doctor was inside of me telling me this information. At, you know, 14. What do I know at 14? And so um, I remember telling myself, it's, it's okay, it's going to end. It's okay, it's going to end. It's okay, it's going to end. And that meant something huge, that life was going to end, and that was okay. And even though I knew that I wasn't going to die, I knew that this thing, this moment, like any other moment in your life, is going to end, and that's okay. And so I think somewhere along the way, when I was very young, and I don't know if I've told you this story before, but when I was like six years old or five, my mom told me not to go outside. So, of course, I went outside. I went out the front door. I went up to the sidewalk, and I stopped. And then all of a sudden, I remember these three little rocks uh, that were like pumice stones. In the 1970s, they were really popular to put out in front of your house. It's topiaries and such. So I, I'm, I, I climb the first one. I climb the second one. I get to the third one. I sit down, and I, I, I put myself into a meditative pose as if I know what I'm doing. I'm in this moment, you know. And I fall into a deep meditation. And somewhere in this process, I feel something touch the top of my head, like a droplet of water. And it just travels and flows through me. And it says, my dear son, I will always be behind you and protect you. Now, if my mom did that to me, and I don't know, that's a trippy ass mom, first of all. Uh, but <laughs> I don't think that was, it was more, it was so intense. I mean, I felt like a, a wash, if you will, come over my entire body. And I took that as this liberty to just explore life. And so at no point did I ever deny myself the pleasure of something that I wanted to experience. Uh, many times there were uh, societal, if you will, regularities or ethical codes that would uh, stop the normal person from doing so. But I think that first experience at 14 years old with this journey that happened to me, I think that that really expanded my mind in a way where I was just more... I guess, quote unquote, free, broken from the matrix, if you will, um, you know, outside of the um, normal sense of behavior. I mean, I'm 41 and I still haven't gotten married. I have had an enormous amount of very special uh, women in my life that I still keep in contact to this day. I think there's only two out of all the women I've ever been with that I don't have some form of contact with. And that's a uh, a pretty big number to keep hold of. So, um, you know, I'm not that I'm trying to, I'm not, I'm just, I've just been a very, I've traveled everywhere. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. And I've met amazing, beautiful, free spirits. And I, I don't know if I've ever told you the story. This one blows me away to this day. Um, 
I'm sitting in uh, uh, the tube in, in, in London. I'm traveling from a small town called Essex into Covent Gardens, where I would go street perform every day. And I did this for months and months. And it's usually when I street perform, I, 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 I'm so addicted to the creation of a moment uh, that I, I just want it every day. And I want it, want it, want it. But I also don't burn myself out. So I only work like two or three hours. <laughs> so there's, there's a balance. <laughs> but I'm, I'm in the train. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting next to this girl. She's a beautiful Indian girl. And she says to me, uh, you know, you seem interesting. What do you do? I think I had a deck of cards in my hand or something. And I said, well, I'm a magician and a hypnotist. And she goes, you're a what? I go, yeah, I do. I do uh, hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming. And, you know, I've been studying it since I was a kid. And she's like, wow, that's, that's, really, that's really crazy. And she goes, so, you know, how do you live? And so I go into this explanation. We have a, a, maybe a 10-minute conversation. And, you know, she's like, I wish I could be like you. And I said, you know, you can. And she goes, how? And I go, you just start walking in that direction. And she goes, what? And, uh, you know, maybe she didn't get it or something. But then all of a sudden, I, I receive a message. Uh, and this is, I believe, six months later from that, um, from that moment on Facebook, on my fan page of all places, right? And she says, hey, I'm not sure if you're going to remember me, but I was on the train with you and I was telling you that my, my dream was always to be in fashion, but I was not a very good looking woman. So I didn't know how I would be in that world, but I've always been an editor and I love writing. And I just wanted to let you know that that day I quit my job. And for like all this time, I couldn't find a job. And today I found the job of my dreams. I'm the editor of a brand new fashion magazine. And I am like, <laughs> you know, like, wow, you know, so there, and I have countless amounts of stories like that. That's the story. That's the real car kicker is that I have amazing, beautiful stories of transformation of people who have somehow or another found uh, inspiration in, in my insanity, call it. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about that insanity because you know, that is what <laughs> is, <laughs> no, that is what is helping you create this the seminar that's going to help inspire so many people to understand who they are and where they need to go uh, you, you know uh, you, the creation of the seminar has been something that i've been doing over over many years i've given parts of this uh at, at different um businesses i remember my friend when i was 28 years old uh he hired me to do um an amazing artist, by the way, if you have never, if you want to look up amazing, just wicked artist, his name's Jody Robert. That's just a side note. But uh, he hired me when I was 28 to do um, uh, his office company teaching. Like I walked in there and I did this whole thing where I was doing magic and neurolinguistic programming, mixing it together to try and express ideas. And so then I did it again when I was in Greece. Uh, I had lived in Israel for a year, and then I backpacked through Europe for uh, almost a year. And at that time, I, I, I did a, 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 a lecture that lasted four hours for the International Brotherhood of Magicians of Greece. And they were floored, and they loved it, and they were amazed with me. And, and so I thought to myself, somewhere along the way in the last year, which was quite uh, tumultuous, as I said, I, I, I was shot uh, incidentally by being uh, around... Uh, a very just a weird situation in New Orleans uh, in a really weird day, by the way. Um, it was the worst day of shootings in New Orleans history where 14 people were shot all in the same day and me and my friend were number uh, 13 and 14. Really weird. Just a very weird, just, just add in, sprinkle in a little bit of, <laughs> you know, why not? Um, so... So yeah, it's been it's been a very tumultuous year for me, and in and somewhere along the way, I've had some very beautiful people. You being one of them, Rob, and I'm not just saying that; I really mean that. Uh, uh, the way that you sponsored me, the way that you've always kept up with me and talked with me, I've had some very beautiful mentors in my life in the last year um, that have 
really stepped up to the plate and have said, listen, man, I love you too much. And there's too much beauty in what you're creating inside of yourself and around the people who see you to have this go to waste. You need to create something for people to really grab a hold of and understand who you are. And all the crazy whatever and this and the videos and the naked in the streets of Manhattan, who cares, bro? That only helps you sell it later on when you go, hey, look, I've actually made something of myself and all this other crazy just shows that I can tell you how to be crazy too, but not take it too far. <laughs> something to that effect, you know? Um, and you know what? Honestly, when I say crazy, I don't think I'm actually crazy. I'm thinking what society as a whole would look at if they look at any one of my videos of me you know ranting in the streets with a fig leaf on my crotch uh and a, and a cardboard sign you'd be like hey this guy's a little poopy uh and then and then if you also see you know uh, a video of me with a swastika on my forehead or i'm doing blackface in a video i'm walking into women's bathrooms and using the restroom you'd say hey the guy's pretty out there but i think if you look at the whole of what my uh internet existence is there's a very prominent speech there which is easily share love give grow faith-based life love one another share with everyone you know even when i'm even when i'm homeless i mean like i mean i'm talking to the roughest of the rough and i wrote about this i don't it's on my blog which is mentally hip blog just to throw that out sorry <laughs> but uh uh so yeah, on my blog, I spent, I spent 30 days homeless in New York. And so every day I was sleeping at Columbus Circle. And I was literally, this is crazy. I had a, a tarp and a backpack and I had my magic tricks in there and I would have one or two days of clothing. And the rest of my stuff was hiding behind Houdini's magic trick inside of Phantasma Magic. All of my clothing, my belongings were all hiding behind a Houdini Museum installment. <laughs> you, can't, you can't beat this kind of stuff. And so I would come into the magic store every couple days and hang out with my friends who were magicians and I would grab some clothes, put some of my dirty stuff in there, you know, dip it away in a plastic bag so it wouldn't stink up the store. And, and I would run back out to the street and start performing. And I was performing in Times Square. So I'd be performing in Times Square, trying to save some money, eating some food, and then going back to Columbus Circle and sleeping under the face of an angel every night, which was part of the sculpture, and um, which is the face that's facing towards Times Square. If you're looking at the Columbus Circle area, which has the waterfalls around it, I would literally right there on the platform just put out my tarp, and I would go to sleep every night. And uh, in the morning, I would wake up, I'd run to Starbucks as soon as they opened, I'd get some coffee, I'd run to the YMCA, and I had snuck in, and uh, I finagled my way to have some people like me, and I was able to get in every day and take a shower, because they knew that I was going to just take a shower, they knew I wasn't working out, and they knew that I was a good guy trying to get dressed nicely every day. So, I think they just felt for me, and, uh, and, and so I, 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 I finagled it, so for a month, Every morning, um, I would write at the YMCA. I would use a small computer that had a like the change thing for people who were tourists, and I would put in like two or three dollars, and I would write as fast as I could and talk about what had happened to me the night before and the experiences that I was going through. And so, yeah, that led to this idea that I've had for years now, which is to uh, to take people with super you know discretionary income and take them and put them into a homeless experience for three to five days and really, you know, take their, take everything away from them, their, their wallets, their phones, their everything. And then just really just run them through the muck of the system of what the system really is, you know, and run them through that and show them what it feels like to be homeless because you think, Oh, well, let me just take the guy to a homeless shelter. They'll help him. And yeah, they help, and I'm not taking anybody down who works at a homeless shelter. I'm not pushing away anybody who does anything for the homeless. But it's it's this really weirdly derogatory help. It's like, okay, look, we bring you in, but you have to be here at 9 o'clock. We kick you out at 4 in the morning, and here, go on this work bus and work all day long. Make 50 possibly dollars, and then 
oh, we take away $10 for travel and we take away $5 for your food that we gave you for lunch. And, oh, and, 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 and then by the time you get back to the thing, you barely got $20, $30. Let's say you're a drug addict of some sort. There goes that. And then you're back inside the thing the next night. And I saw so many, my friends. So many, and I, I, this happened to me when I was 20. This has happened to me over and over again because I live this kind of life, right? So I've seen this. And at, at 20, I was in Orlando working at Church Street Station for a company called Magic Max. And I ended up the manager of the store in about a two-week period because one guy quit. And I was literally walking out of a homeless shelter in a three-piece suit every day. <laughs> And at night, I would come around the corner, and there was a group of guys that I would smoke pot with, and they would see me come around the corner, and they knew that I would bring them new magic every night. And every, I mean, it was, it was on, like, on cue. As soon as I came around the corner, a group of them would start screaming, hooting, and hollering, Magic Man! The Magic Man is here! And I brought some form of love and happiness to their life. And so and, you, you travel all over this world and you kind of live a nomad life. But you know, most people when they look at you would either call you crazy or say, how the heck is he doing this? But it all comes back to this faith based traveling, this faith based life. And you know, it's fascinating because most people will never ever leave the town they grew up in. They only dream about these places. But yet, if they would open up a little bit and have more of this mentality that you have, they could see more of the world. So, you know, wow, uh, Rob, you know, the, you know, the mentality that I have, uh, I think, is a super extreme. And it's very out, uh, way, way outside of the norm. And when I speak and I talk the way I do, I'm like very exuberant and happy about it. And. I like my life. So uh, I, I have no qualms in who I am and the, the things, my deviances, uh, any of my issues, I'm okay with them at some point. You know, like I'm okay because in the end, I don't rape, I don't kill, I don't murder, I don't sell drugs, I don't, I just try to be a good person that wants to entertain others and take away a moment of, pain or a moment of, you know, and then on the other thing, uh, I do whatever I can for anybody. I mean, I'm talking anybody. I don't care if you're rich. I don't care if you're poor. And I take them uh, from places of, hmm, my analogy is from cobwebs around them to just clearing the cobwebs and saying, Whoa, oof, relax. That's, that's all just cobwebs. And this is the thing that you're looking for. It's right here. And then I let go. And then I can't get in touch with them weeks later, you know, <laughs> I'm talking, I'm trying to call them and they're like, Oh, I'm so busy. I'm sorry, Paul. I love you, bro. But I got, you know, you know, and I'm like, there's something that's really powerful there. And that comes, I think from two different things. One, it's this mentality of, I think I'm always going to survive. I think there's always going to be a thing there and that death is okay. That's one of them. And then the second one is you become a pro at anything you do. And I think that that's the same as like, you know, if I, if you throw me literally, I don't care where it is, drop me in the middle of anywhere, anywhere. And it's happened to me. So I know I can do it. Uh, and I've done it to myself repeatedly for no apparent reason, you know, but dump me anywhere. And I think in a month I'll be up and about and at least surviving daily with a pretty good sense of okayness. Uh, in some way, uh, what, even if it's having to clean ditches and or to people's toilets, I mean, I don't care. You know what I mean? I really, there is nothing uh, above me and nothing below me. And, and that means the same as the people next to me. So I, I don't know, you know, you could be a prince or the, the guy of Dubai, uh, you know, and you say something, I'm just going to be like, I'm sorry, sir, that's bullshit. <laughs> you know, I'm, I am full on the jester uh, of the court jester of, of the world. Uh, and I have been for, I don't know how long at this point. And it, it's beyond me still. And we've had this conversation. You, you, you do, because you know, my marketing skills, you know, what I am and what I've done. 
So you, it's it's um, it's beyond me to this day that people don't know who I am. Like, but if they do, they either know and they're just like, he's amazing, or they're just like, uh, mom, <laughs> you know, and they're just, they're just they just. How do out. people? How do people get a hold of you? I mean, do they? Do you have a? a they go to your Facebook or what? Uh, yeah, I mean, I have every single social media there is. You know, I tell a joke in my in, in one of my jokes or, or in one of my tricks that I say, look, you know, reach me on MySpace, Facebook, Instagram, you know, <laughs> uh, Twitter. Yeah, I still got an Insta- I still got a MySpace, man. I still have a mentally hit MySpace. I went back it's to check it out, and it's still there with all of my content and all the videos and all the. I was like, this is crazy. And it's, and that's why I always tell people, be careful what you put on the internet. And then they look at me and they look like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Just be careful. No, it's, it's mentally hip. and Men- Mentally hip. Yeah. Mentally HYP.com. And that's my, my website. It goes to a Wix site because it's free. And I don't feel like paying for stuff. Uh, <laughs> I, I believe, I believe the internet was always free. It was always meant to be free. We are free, and I don't like to have any sense of man on top of me. Now, as far as my 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 domain name, I don't know. I don't know how to get that for free. I tried. I looked it up. Uh, <laughs> um, so you know, I'll pay that off. I guess ten dollars a year, whatever it is. That's cheap enough. Um, and then everything else is mentally hip on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Grinder. Tinder, Bumble, uh, I'm on them all. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm uh, all up some because I don't even know some of these. <laughs> uh, there's one called Feld now, F E E L D, which is supposed to be field, yeah. and it's supposed to be for people who are you know swingers and that kind of stuff. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, man. It's a crazy world we're living in, and the future. I don't know if I told you this. Uh, to just end up on some awesome, beautiful future note stuff. But some seven, eight years ago, did I ever tell you about the guy, Josh Harris? Did I ever tell you about him? Mm-hmm. No? We so like a minute left. Oh, man. Well, I'll do my best. Well, anyways, I met a guy. His name is Josh Harris. Uh, he was uh, in a documentary film made by a beautiful woman uh, named Andy Timonar. And uh, Andy, Andy Timonar. So, sorry. And so... The movie was amazing. I got in touch with him on Facebook. We became instant friends uh, over a uh, course of four years, but we became friends in person, and they have now a movie being made about him by Ben Stiller. And uh, he was just sending me text messages the other day, and uh, I think that's the last thing I want to end up on, is that in the end of my life, I have met some amazing, beautiful people, and without them, I would not be who I am today. And there you go. And that's what makes Paul an e-hero. So I want to thank Paul for joining us. I want to thank you guys for listening to us. And I want you wish you guys a happy day. And, and you know what? Just, just be like Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, man. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Adios. And check right. out future e-heroes episodes on iTunes, on Google Play, on YouTube. Adiós.